Our planet's climate is changing. There's no question now that what we are doing is having a dramatic impact on our planet's climate. Join me as I look at what the North East are doing in the fight against climate change. It is so important that we reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Now, part of this could be that we invent huge new technologies that literally suck carbon dioxide out the atmosphere and deposit it into sediments. But it's not just enough to remove carbon dioxide that we've already put out there. We need to reduce the amount that we are putting out there. And it could be that we play our own little role in huge systems. So I've come to Sunderland University where I'm going to meet Dr. Alex Lockwood and he's going to tell me about how food systems are pivotal in the fight against climate change. So Alex, what do we mean when we say uh, food systems? The food system, it sounds complicated, but actually it can be quite simple if you think about it as all of the products and energy that goes into the food that we eat. So that's everything from sort of like farmers uh, working on the fields, uh, the crops um, and the animal products they make, uh, the whole production process through um, producers and supermarkets where you buy the foods and then to your plate and the cooking. So that, that in total is the food system. So essentially it, um, it, it kind of depends on what we as a public eat creates different pressures on food systems worldwide. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and, um, and both ways as well, because we, it's, not, it's not only demand-led, it's also supply-led a lot of the time. So it's, yeah, what, what we want to eat, uh, and then the, the food system supplies us with that. And sometimes the food system comes up with things and markets them to us, and then we want them. So a really good example of that is like protein powder, for example, yep. whey protein. 25, 30 years ago, whey was just a waste product. Mm -hmm. And then it was, a, so they were working working out what could they do with it. So they marketed it as this protein powder and now it's and now it's what everyone wants. You a see genius. it in all the stores, ingenious, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the food system is about um, how the, our food gets to us. Yeah. And um, there, there's, it's changed in the last uh, 70 years. In the last 70 years has been a productionist model. It's like more food cheaply. And farmers have done a great job doing that, you know. And what that's also meant though is actually a lot of use of pesticides and nitrogen fertilizers that aren't great for the environment and what it also means is some um, in a way chunking up intensifying making farms bigger so they're more e um, e efficient rather than lots and lots of different farmers all over the place doing their small little things so yeah the, the whole system together has really made uh, has been framed around this idea of getting us food cheaply yeah but that's not always the best for us okay so so you yourself are a vegan and how has um, kind of that led into your research in climate change? Sure, yeah. I mean, I went vegetarian first about 30 years ago uh, when I saw um, an article about whales being killed, actually. It was oh, right, like, wow. oh, yeah, I didn't want to be any part of that. And then went back and forward, you know, eating meat. So I, I grew up eating meat mm -hmm. uh, and I have very fond memories of going to the butchers with my granddad and getting sausage and bacon, you know, things yeah. like that. But yeah, my, I, I came to understand that that wasn't for me. Um, and it led into questions of like, well, if it's not for me, like how, you know, is it for everyone else? What are the, what are the environmental impacts of the food we eat? What are the health impacts? What are the ethical impacts? So for me as an academic, I was really interested in studying that. And, for, and the, one of the ways that I've mostly studied it is from like sort of the stories we tell about food okay the stories we tell about ourselves about food oh. um yeah <laughs> and um and the and the ways in which we decide what we eat uh, and and why you know so in the uk like 98 percent of us in a poll said we're animal lovers and mm -hmm. yet 98 percent of people still we'll eat still, animal products yeah. so how does that cognitive dissonance come about you know okay and what i think is really really interesting is that you've approached this not kind of from uh what we may call a scientific angle and it's, it's much more about the language that we use and, and how we uh behave around animals is that right yeah absolutely yeah yeah so i'm i'm in a i'm in the almost like the humanities and social sciences part of the academic world so we you know so we're not the hard scientists crunching the numbers we're looking at the way that people interact with the world uh, so that can be like qualitative uh research they call it you know 
like so studying the language that you would mm -hmm. use the behaviors that we practice and even looking at the texts you know uh, uh, like the newspapers or the books or the magazines or the TV programs and say what they're telling us about the food we eat and so that's what that's what I've studied uh, and what I've studied through that is an understanding of sort of the again the narratives the myths the stories that we build up around um, animals and about food and actually it's really important to unpick those myths particularly now because the food system is the biggest impact on our environment across the globe here in the UK and worldwide and so if we want to tackle climate change we've really got to be thinking about looking at our food systems and you've actually written a report about this which was released um, a few months ago yeah in July in yeah. July and you are now going to be taking this to the COP26 summit in Glasgow that's right yeah yeah so I'm very lucky and privileged to be able to do that I recognize that uh, it's called planting value in food and it was commissioned by the vegan society and it was to look at um, what, our food system and what are the barriers and obstructions and benefits of our food system as they exist at the moment and I didn't just talk to vegans, it's really important to say that. I spoke to around about 35, 40 people, food policy experts, sheep farmers, dairy farmers, and also plant farmers, you know, growing chickpeas. Um, I also spoke to um, uh, experts in nature friendly farming, you know, people who are growing hedgerows and trees alongside their yeah, crops yeah. to make sure that uh, they're, they're good for insects, yeah. you know. Um, I, and I summarized around about 100 other reports to put into this what we can do to get to being a better food system. And, and, and we, we talk about it in a, a couple of ways, don't we? We talk about individual responsibility. Oh, what, what do we eat? What do we buy at the supermarket? How can we um, make change? Yeah. And that is important, of course it is, but actually it's really important that governments and organisations and businesses make the change as well and that they take responsibility. I guess it's, it's those, those with power making changes to allow us to make the change. Absolutely, yeah. Like you, you look at really simple examples like wearing seat belts or not smoking in bars. You know, they were laws made by government, mm -hmm. you know, and they make they, they saved thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives since those laws have came in. You know, the, the general public didn't do that, the governments did yeah. that and we and we and we abided by the law. So there are changes that governments can make here in the UK and, and globally that actually give us better health, not reducing choice, but just making our choices that we do have better and healthier. I guess it's about diversifying choice, isn't it? Giving us more choice. Yeah. One of the things that you always hear as a vegan is like, oh, I can never do that. It's so restrictive. I wouldn't want to give things up. I eat a much more varied diet than the majority of people I know who eat a standard omnivore diet. And that's because I have to really think about things. Like when, when someone asks me, where do you get your protein? I go, where do you get your protein? Yeah, yeah. And I know, and you probably don't, you know. And I go, where do you get your B12 from? And you know, well, I don't know, but I do, you know. So we think about it a lot because we've had to. And it's so much easier now to be a vegan or a vegetarian now than it is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Or, or even just to do something like Veganuary, you know, like but people are, um, people are, Oh, and I understand it. People are sort of worried about change. You know, people don't like change. And if they have to then think about giving up sort of their favourite foods, that's a hard thing to do. They don't like being told what to do, whatever. But try it a little bit. You know, give up on a Saturday if you want. You know, like, yeah. you know, I personally find it much easier and much more ethical for me to go... I'm not going to eat animal products. But actually, if you're not in the same space that I am, yeah, yeah. but you really care about the environment and climate change, it's like, well, what, what's my role in, this, in the food system? Am I just a consumer or am I a citizen? When it comes to the food system, it's never been easier for us to have a more varied diet, which, if we're careful about our choices, could help mitigate against climate change. But, as Alex said, it's not just about our choices about the choices of those who we put in power to make our choices that bit easier.